What's up, guys? Justin here from Poorly Reviewed Beer. Uh, here for the final installment of the Oktoberfest series. I have two more beers on tap to review, and then once we do those, I'm going to rank all six of the beers that I've had from the Oktoberfest series. Uh, give them a ranking and a little bit of a rundown for my own personal favorite to least favorite. Or probably, probably least favorite to favorite is how the, uh, the order will go. But um, let's get right into the beers. Starting with Victory Brewing Company in Downingtown, Pennsylvania, and their Fest beer. Uh, from the brewery, friendship and camaraderie, the two keys to any festive event. And then there's the beer. It should be full-bodied yet in, in infinitely smooth, seductively malty with a kiss of the hops for balance. This is our Fest beer, painstakingly crafted from German malts, Decoction brewed for full flavor and carefully aged for depth of character. Gather with your friends for a festive moment of victory. Uh, uses imported Tura Vienna and Munich German uh, malts, whole flower German hops, and it comes in at 5.6% ABV. Let's check it out. A decent reddish copper color. Kind of turns into a straight up orange as I hold it into to the light. Um, nothing really special in terms of highlights. Pretty just much just goes uh, straight to an orange color. About a finger's worth of head. Not a whole lot in terms of carbonation uh, shooting up through the glass. Let's give it a try. So there is a bit of a malt backbone present, and I'm getting a little bit of a caramel malt sweetness, but even, I'm, I'm not, my nose is not real sensitive, but even kind of putting it up to, putting the glass up to my face as I was getting ready to drink, to smell and to taste, there's kind of something a little bit off-putting. Um, I would dare say some kind of off flavor in this beer. It's almost like something kind of, of, of vegetal or green. Uh, just something that's really blocking out what I feel like are some are some things that are that would be really good. As I, as I said, I'm getting a, a hint, a hint of caramel, hint hint of a hint of malt, but. Mm. Just a really, really, really strange off note. Um, again, something kind of green, not not really grassy, almost maybe like a vegetable husk or something like that. Um, really strange. No, not not at all wasn't what I'm expecting, and uh, I mean I would say it was probably some kind of a flaw with this bottle and. Uh, might be worth seeing. We're getting a little late in the October Oktoberfest season. Let's see if I can find another bottle somewhere and and give it a try and see if it turns out any better than this. But uh, yeah, pr uh, problematic off flavors going on, and yeah, that's a bit of a disappointment coming from Victory. And so um, probably just best to not linger on it, and we'll move on to the next beer. All right, next beer up, and let's see if we can fare a little better. With Munich, Germany's own Hofbrau Munchen, Hofbrau Oktoberfest. Uh, from the from the bottle, and forgive me, it's very small. The Oktoberfest originated in 1810 in Munich, Germany, as a wedding celebration for the Crown Prince Ludwig of Bavaria. This product was created especially for this event and is brewed usually for the Oktoberfest, now the largest beer festival in the world. Hofbrau Munchen is one of a selected group of breweries granted the privilege of supplying the Oktoberfest with their products. 
Using the highest quality ingre ingredients, HB's Oktoberfest specialty has its own distinctive and unmistakable taste. Uh, 6.3% ABV. Hmm. So. <laughs> Considerably lighter than any of the beers we've had to this point. Good amount of head. Um, you can tell I had to sip a little bit off the top, but uh, about two fingers of head, but not a. Yeah, probably end up being three with what I what I uh, sipped off. Two and a half to three fingers total. Not a lot of carbonation in the beer itself, though. But a really kind of nice, nice yellow color. But again, considerably lighter in color compared to the oranges and and reddish coppers, deep coppers we've had, and pretty much all the rest of the beers. Uh, we've had in this Oktoberfest series. But uh, let's give it a try. Hmm. Also very different taste-wise, and I think that's probably not surprising, being uh, very much a, and obviously a, a German beer and... Um, Made under the, the the purity laws there in Germany, so just a very use of all natural ingredients, and very traditional processes used in making this beer. Um, fair bit of malt backbone, um, but just a whole lot of grain. Um, I mean, it's it's pretty nice overall. Very light, very crisp. You do get a little bit of a, a grainy aftertaste, but um, it's a quite tasty beer overall. Just, I'm just um, again very different, and almost just a very kind of traditional lager to pale lager um, compared to the the more fall style beers that we've had um, in the rest of the series. Um, but real solid, real tasty, just a. Uh, very different, almost doesn't feel like an Oktoberfest, but again, I think the, uh, the American concept is very different from the, the German concept. Um, so, again, tasty beer from, uh, from Hofbrau Munchen. All right, so over three videos in the Oktoberfest series, I've reviewed six different beers. I have my uh, cheat notes. I'm going to give you uh, my own personal impressions, ranking these beers. Uh, again, going from least favorite to, uh, to, my, mo to my most favorite. So starting off with uh, the number six beer is the, the one we had today. First off, the Victory uh, Fest beer. Again, just seemed problematic. Uh, some kind of off green notes or, some, or something were uh, interfering with what obviously I could tell was some malt backbone, some sweet caramel. I'm sure there were other uh, flavors intended to be there, but I wasn't, uh, I wasn't able to pick, pick them up for the, uh, the off note. Uh, coming in at number five was the Left hand, Oktoberfest Mars and Lager. Um, a pr pretty good beer overall, well executed, I can tell that. Just as a bit of a personal preference, um, just a little too sweet for me and a little too overbearing on um, kind of what I call the fall spices, pumpkin pumpkin pie spice kind of uh, flavors, if you will. Uh, a little more than I like. That's kind of why I stay away from uh, beers this, of this season in general. Um, and so just uh, generally good beer, still drinkable, but uh, those, those uh, spices and sweet spices were a little bit um, just not really my thing. Uh, number four we also had today, the Hofbrau Munchen Oktoberfest. Again, very different from all the rest of the beers. Excuse me. Uh, very different, a lot more grainy, kind of more of a traditional lager to pale lager, but uh, plenty tasty and... Uh, Overall, a nice little beer. Um, these last three were all really, really quite good. I would say starting with number three was the, the Thomas Creek Oktoberfest Lager. Um, a little bit of sweetness, uh, some nice toastiness, nice malt backbone, and um, just it was kind of a one-note beer, but that note they really did well uh, taste-wise, and I enjoyed it. 
Number two, the, the Bell's Oktoberfest. Um, again, solid malt backbone, some honey sweetness, and that was really nice because there was less of the, the fall spice overall than really in any of the, the other beers. I'm um, again, crackery, biscuity malts, a little bit of just kind of the, a grainy standard beer note. Um, just overall, just a uh, really enjoyable beer. My number one from Ballast Point was Dead Ringer. Uh, just really, really bold flavors overall. Um, it was a little bit sweet, but not overbearing for my taste. Um, driven by the malts, along with some biscuity malt notes. Um, a nice amount of spiciness, like very, very well, uh, very, very well placed for me. Good amount of caramel overall, just a, a really, really great beer. Now, of course, I would expect nothing, else, nothing less uh, from Ballast Point, quite frankly. So that is uh, my rundown of the rankings of the six Oktoberfest beers. Uh, before I get out of here, if you're like me and come around to this uh, this time of year and aren't crazy about some of the uh, seasonal beers, specifically those pumpkin beers that tend to come out um, in October and really, quite frankly, through the end of the calendar year, I'm going to attach an, an article from Brew Studs. The link will be in the description below, uh, listing seven more Marzen style beers, which uh, a lot of the beers that I reviewed were in the Marzen style. It's a traditional German style. And I'm um, just a little bit different from the the usual pumpkin pumpkin pie beers that that tend to be produced at this time of year. So you can check out that article for some more beer recommendations in addition to the ones I had here in the Oktoberfest series. And you can find all of the all of our reviews, uh, video and written, along with news commentary and lots more at poorly poorlyreviewedbeer.com. Also check out PRB on Twitter and Facebook. All those links will be in the description below. That does it for this edition of Poorly Reviewed Beer. See you next time.